This is Twit. We are back from the break, and that means it's time to talk to the Washington Post's own Heather Kelly. Welcome back to the show, Heather. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Thanks for taking some time to join us. Uh, before we get to uh, this excellent guide that you've written, um, I was hoping that you could start by telling us just a bit about the Surgeon General's advisory on social media and youth mental health. There might have been some folks who didn't hear that this came out, but yes, the Surgeon General has all sorts of information, and this latest advisory covers mental health and kids. Exactly. So it came out this week. It's about 25 pages long. There's a short version, which I appreciate because it sort of acknowledges we all have attention span issues, which is <laughs> circular. Um, and it's 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 interesting because it's a warning that also includes a whole bunch of hedging saying we don't know that much. <laughs> it's like we don't know if this is mostly bad or good for kids. And the takeaway is we don't know enough to feel safe letting children just have unfettered access to social media. It's a call for parents to do more. Weirdly, it's a call for kids to stop bullying like that's ever stopped a kid from doing anything. And it's also a call on the companies uh, to do a lot more about their settings and research into their products. Yeah, I imagine if I tell this, you know, I go to school as, uh, I don't know, a middle schooler and I say, the Surgeon General said you have to stop bullying me. That's just going to get me bullied more. Um, but <laughs> along with this came uh, the, the opportunity to talk about a guide that you uh, have written that sort of covers the <sighs> some recommendations on what a parent or guardian might want to do when it comes to uh, their kid. Because as you point out, the Surgeon General's um, advisory in terms of, of the recommendations is a little vague. And it's more about um, kind of the generally, it's, it's not even generally recognized as safe as we have with the FDA. It's like generally recognized as shruggy emoji because we just don't know the impact yet. So Luckily, you've got some more concrete information, and that is why I'm glad that we can talk about this today. Let's start with age. Uh, the advisory does focus on kids and teens, and this is where I ask while knowing in my brain the answer, are there kids who have access to social media? And at what age should we expect kids to be exposed to social media? And according to the research that you did, at what age should a kid be given their first phone? So, I mean, the, the first thing to understand is kids are going to have access to social media. You could hide every phone in your house and they're, oh God, I sound like every like old, old <laughs> panic. They're going to, they're going to be exposed to it at school. So 95% of teens, so 13 to 17 year olds are on social media in some way or have access to it. And 40% of kids eight to 12 have some access to social media. And that's something to keep in mind here is that in a lot of these studies, YouTube is considered social media. and Kids love their YouTube. So mm -hmm. it, it might sound a lot scarier than it really is. It's not like they're out here with like Finstas and, you know, <laughs> whatever the kids are doing on TikToks. Um, so, yeah, they're on social media. You know, my kids know what TikTok is. They're definitely younger because we will sit there and we will look up a specific animal, animal together and we'll laugh. And so, like, you know, there's there's all kinds of different levels of exposure they're getting. So when it comes to the big question of when do you let them have a phone, which is going to be their portal into real social media without you being able to watch everything they do. You read this report, you're going to think, well, I never want them to have a phone. <laughs> I never want them to have social media. And that's completely unrealistic. And so what we've kind of talked to experts about is this sweet spot around 14, sometimes in middle school, when they're having a bit more independence, you might also want to use those tracking features to see where they are in a safety way, not a creepy parent way. Uh, so I think that's when you first start to give them their own devices. It could even be a wearable, but a lot of times it is a smartphone. Yeah. And there was something that stuck out to me in your guide. You point out that there are many apps and services that kids aren't legally supposed to use. And, you know, you and I have uh, probably in in tech coverage that we've done learned about this, but I uh, it stuck out to me because I thought about the parents that I know who may not be aware of that. So could you talk a little bit about how uh, there are some online services that kids aren't supposed to be on based on what the law is? The general rule is apps designed for adults, that's 13 and up in the United States, in Europe, I believe it's 16 and up. Maybe we should take some cues from them. But yes, if you're under 13, you should not be able to have an account on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok. Uh, it is against the rules. And 
the funny thing is nobody's actually paying attention to those rules. I recently wrote about how Uber is starting to allow teens to ride in cars. And I talked to a bunch of teens who are like, we weren't supposed to be in Ubers. <laughs> Just nobody pays attention to these rules. Uh, but yeah, you should be 13 or older before you sign up for anything. And then I was hoping you could talk a little bit about the ways that parents can limit, track, and monitor their kids' technology use, but then also discuss the pitfalls that you kind of hinted at earlier that can come with that limiting, tracking, and monitoring. There are services out there that allow uh, parents to do so on Android and on iOS and in other ways. Tell us about what is a little bit about what's available because we want folks to go check out your guide, obviously, to, to learn more about this. And then um, what's, what's the risk there in doing so? So there's two things. One, when you first give them the phone, I highly recommend doing it just a little bit younger and turning on all the settings. It's going to be a billion times harder to take away access to something later than it is just to start out with nothing. <laughs> like here is your phone. It has a calculator app. <laughs> Let's go from there. So that's that's kind of the first step. And then the other thing is your kids are they're smarter than you. I'm sorry, but they are. They're going to figure out a way around everything. Or they're just going to go to like their friend's house and figure out a way around it there. So you you want to have some control. You want to have rules with them. And then you also have to understand that at the end of the day, they're still going to access weird things on the internet. And so the most important thing that parents can actually do is have conversations with their kids, like actual hard conversations about bullying, about you know grooming, predators on the internet, pornography. And one of my favorite experts I talked to, um, her name is Catherine. She says, when you get them earlier, they're just more likely to listen to you. Like before the teen years, when they're like, mom, I don't want to talk about sex. Like you get them young and they're like, oh, this is fascinating. Tell me all about it. And it's just a small window of first phone still likes you. And that's really your sweet spot. Ah, okay. That makes sense. And then um, you talk about how, or uh, perhaps it was one of the, the, folks that you spoke to, but it stuck out to me because I know a lot of parents, again, who are using these tracking means for their children, but there was sort of a tip on how to do it so that it is not the creepy parent way, like you talked earlier, but in the safety way. What what advice can you give about that? How do you approach that with a child where they don't necessarily feel like they're having to, I don't know, strap their phone to their cat and run away? <laughs> Wait, is that a good workaround? I write that. Um, <laughs> Please don't write that down. No one out there listening. I don't know. <laughs> don't tell the kids. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's really important to teach kids consent and it's a two-way street, right? So we also want to get their consent before we do something like tracking them. And the most important thing, no matter what level of controls you have on them, they need to know about them. There are some outliers. If you have a kid who's already struggled with addiction issues or you know, has some serious issues and this is recommended by a professional that's, that's between you guys, you know, let professionals help you make these decisions. But for regular kids, you do not want to be tracking them in any way they don't know about. And what's also interesting is kids these days are just really used to being tracked by their parents. I, I was like a teen raver and I would just spend the night at a friend's house and it never occurred to me that my parents would catch me, but kids these days can't get away with anything. Their parents always know where they are, I guess, unless the cat tip works. Um, and they're just a little more used to it. It's not as strange to them. Um, so <laughs> with feline, feline use aside, one thing that really uh, stuck out to me in your guide was the set of tips you provide near the end of the sort of the main article uh, about checking in with that smartphone wielding child. I thought this was really interesting. And maybe this also is talking about getting them at that age where they you know, want to share things with you. Could you just talk about um, those tips on, on sort of regularly checking in and seeing how things are going? So I think kids change so fast. It's wild. You know, at the beginning of the year, you give them a phone, they're great, they're excited. At the end of the year, you know, they have all these issues. Maybe they've picked up from social media, from bullying, from thinspo posts on Instagram. You constantly want to be talking to your kid about what they're seeing on their phone what their worries are, and you want to ask open-ended questions. I don't know if you've ever asked a kid or been asked as a kid how your day was. The answer is like, fine, or stop asking me. So you want to ask them about their feelings, what they're seeing, kind of specific open-ended things that just lets them chat about whatever they want. And maybe they're worried about a friend who is ignoring them and always staring at their phone. Or you know, sometimes they'll be like, you know what, I don't actually enjoy this platform that I'm on. I'd like to, to turn it off for a while. 
And it's just, you, you can never stop having difficult conversations with your kids. And if you make it a regular habit, maybe they won't think it's so cringe as the kids say. <laughs> um, I just learned about X. I, I, that's, I don't know if that's, that's not really necessarily for the show, but that was a new <laughs> term that I learned that the kids are using where well, if they, uh, when they don't like something about another person or there's something that regularly in another person they don't like it's called an ick so oh women are very familiar oh okay so that's like Sorry. a see I, I don't know i guess i just don't know what an ick is then. a couple a couple dates he's fine third date you get the ick <laughs> well, there you go. It's, i thought i just knew that's what fish get in aquariums <laughs> and you have to give them special <laughs> medicine for their ick <laughs> you do Gills. Oh, now there are men with ick gills. Anyway, <laughs> let's get back to this. The theme of the piece really does seem to center around communication uh, with the Surgeon General's kind of vague advice on social media and youth mental health. What is one piece of advice that you would give to parents who are reading this advisory and immediately are going, I need to take away all of the phones from my kids? Um, okay, chill. It's going to be fine. Do not let them take their phones into the room at night. Just don't like there's no reason. Get them an alarm clock. They're like, oh, I need to wake up. Kids are are waking up and checking their phone. It's interfering with their sleep and it's having all these trickle down effects. So if you do nothing else, set up a rule where at night that phone is someplace they cannot access it. And honestly, your phone should be someplace you can't access Amen. it. So like put them together in a little locked box and and get a Kindle or a book. Beautiful. That I yes, amen. The, the don't get me don't get me started on blue light cuz I'll get going. Anyway, um I will give everyone another piece of advice which is to head over to washingtonpost.com and check out uh, Heather's great piece. It links to some more uh more articles within that you should also read uh outside of going to the Washington Post. If folks want to follow you online, where should they go to do so? God, I'm still I'm still, I'm still on Twitter, man. Like it's a problem. <laughs> it's okay. Um, Everyone else that I've talked to today has said the same thing. So you're fine. I mean, I'm on blue sky. I don't know what it is. I'm on Mastodon. I don't know what that name is. Um, you can also just email me heather.kelly at washpost.com. Not enough people email me. It's really sad and I'm kind of lonely. So send me your problems. I'll see if I can fix them. <laughs> there you go. If you have a question that needs answered, you can email Heather Kelly. Heather, thank you so much for your time today. Good luck with the cats and the ick. And uh, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. The training industry's completion rate is barely 30%. ACI Learning blows its competitors away with an over 80% completion rate. Don't settle for subpar boring training. This is what IT pros want. Fill out the form at go.acilearning.com slash twit for more information on a free two-week training trial for your team.